Well, there's not been a lot of discussion about the Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction in recent days, perhaps because they're behind closed doors most of the time, perhaps because the air has been taken out of the room by the American Jobs Act and other events. But let's refocus the discussion on the work before that committee and some alternatives that are being proposed by our next guest. Senator Mark Warner, Democrat from Virginia, joins us. Senator, thanks for being on POTUS today. Jim, thanks for having me on. You were part of a gang of six that had some original ideas about deficit reduction. That group disbanded, sort of, unless you're still getting together for coffee once in a while, and I haven't heard about that, but we can get into that if you want. But also, you have also you had expressed an interest in being on this committee. You're not on the committee, but you're still working on the problem. What are you doing? Well, we've got now over 40 senators. I think we're at 43 senators who joined with me in a bipartisan way, almost equal number of Democrats, Republicans, urging this super committee to say, if you can go beyond your $1.2 or $1.5 trillion goal, and let's get that number up towards $3 trillion. Uh, because every expert out there from left to right has said, you've got to get $4 trillion in debt reduction to make sure that this our country's on a sustainable path. We did arguably close to a trillion dollars in debt reduction at the end of July, if we only do 1.2, 1.5 more, we're not going to stabilize our debt-to-GDP ratio. And we, as as a group of bipartisan senators, almost a majority, we hope to get 51 signing on to this letter, are saying, Super Committee, if you go big, if you go ahead and tackle the tough, the tough things in the room, like entitlement reform and tax reform to generate some more revenues, we got your back. We'll stand with you guys. And if you make the hard choices, we'll be there to support you. And, you know, There's a lot of talk, uh, private conversation going on in the Senate. I I understand having been involved in a group where we had a $4 trillion deficit reduction plan uh, that, again, had about 40 senators supporting it, didn't get the chance to get to a vote. We were very disappointed in that. Um, But there is a much more than most of the public realizes a recognition by an awful lot of senators uh, that as long as we have this debt overhang, we're not going to be able to do much of anything else in this country in terms of uh, really getting our economy moving together. And, you know, we're going to have a rare opportunity here on a straight up or down vote when the Super Committee reports to show that the political leadership of America can actually check their Democrat and Republican hats for a minute and put the country first. I think uh, getting a long-term debt reduction plan in place would do more to restore both public and business confidence, um, and that would help generate uh, some economic growth. Uh, I think that kind of increase in confidence is the most important thing we could do. Is this group suggesting any particular path to that larger, that big uh, reduction, or is it just a general suggestion well, in principle? What we've said is, we've said is, you know, look at entitlement reform, look at tax reform, let's build on existing work. They're not going to have time to reinvent the wheel, and mm-hmm. chances are they're not going to have time to, you know, completely rewrite the tax code by November, so there'll have to be a, a second step to some of this. Uh, but, you know, Simpson Bowles, uh, which had a four trillion dollar deficit reduction plan, Gang of Six, which based itself upon the work of the Simpson Bowles group, but added some more, uh, making sure that there was real spending enforcement caps in place. You know, there was a separate report called the Dominican Rivlin report. You know, we don't need one more study. Uh, we we've said build upon some of these existing work that's been going on over the last couple of years. Take what's best out of each of these proposals, and if uh, they do that, even if you know it's not. 100% to each of our individual liking, you know, the goal is so much more important than even some of the individual specific components around the edges. It's important that we show that uh, the discipline that we're going to get our debt to GDP ratio down on a sustainable basis. Yeah, and what you're saying echoes exactly what Senator Simpson had said to me when I talked to him. He said the actual burial work has been done. they got plenty of time to do this. It's just a matter of taking the steps that they need to take. And I guess to that point, you say that the 40 senators, we've got your back, but but the challenge in the Senate, is it not, Senator Warner, that any one senator can stop this whole thing in its tracks? Well, well no, that's actually what's so unique about the Super Committee. The way the law is set up is that this is going to be like the, and I know most of your listeners would understand this, you know, like a BRAC report. It's going to come to the floor. That's base and realignment and closure. Uh, it's, going right. to get, it's going to get guaranteed a vote. It's a straight up or down 51 votes. No amendments, no filibusters, no attempts to try to delay this. This is going to get a clean shot, and I think, uh, you know, the bolder they are, this super committee, um, the more we'll be able to say, okay, everybody, you got a chance now. Stop your equivalent. You can either be for cut, putting the country back on a sustainable economic path. Probably what you, you're going to be put before us isn't going to be exactly to any one of our individual likings, but at some point, you know, we are we are slowly 
losing our economic supremacy in this country, and part of that is because self-inflicted wounds made by the political leadership in America in showing that we are not serious about getting our debt and deficits under control. No, you make a great point. That's right. That's the, the voting process behind this is just the straight majority vote without amendments, and that is like a base realignment and closure project or legislation. Senator Warner, and and I don't want to get too much into what happens behind the scenes if it's a problem for you, but it it sounds like from what I've been reading and from what I've been hearing is that this is a difficult path for you to take within your own party and in the leadership in the Democratic Party, or is that a mischaracterization? Well, I think that's a mischaracterization. I think there's an awful lot of people who want to get stuff done here. You know, there there are forces in both parties that would rather delay these discussions until after the next election. That makes no sense to me. You know, every day that we fail to act on this, we add $4 billion to the debt. None of this problem is going to get easier the longer we punt on it. And, you know, there are folks on my side of the aisle, Democratic side, that don't want to deal with entitlements. There are folks on the Republican side of the aisle that don't want to deal with revenues. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, though, that if we're spending at 25% of our GDP on federal spending all-time high, and if our revenues are at 15%, 15.3%, a 70-year low, And if the only time we've been in budget balance over the last 70 years has been about four or five years, and roughly spending and revenues have been between 19 and 21 percent when we've been in relative balance, you know, if we're spending 25 and collecting 15 and balance is around 20, well, that means we've got to raise some more revenues to tax form. That means we've got to cut some spending through uh, both direct cuts and, uh, and making sure that some of these entitlement programs um, are actually sustainable 30, 40, 50 years in the future. And that's going to take give from both sides. Senator Warner, are these the right people on this Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction to cut that kind of a deal? Can you see that conversation taking place? I think I think they are the right folks. Uh, you know, um, they were picked by leaderships of both parties. So, you know, I think leaderships as well have got, uh, you know, clearly invested in this process. Um, I, I do know when you sitting in these rooms and having spent a year plus in these rooms with at least six of my colleagues, uh, Democrats, Republicans, and very conservative, very progressive, you know, you, you wrestle with hard issues. You, every side's got to give. I think every one of these members, and mostly all uh, veteran members of the legislature, of the Congress, uh, a couple of the newer ones are, are, have got prior experience in, in uh, these issues. Uh, I think the enormity of the task can become overwhelming, and we just want to say, in our efforts, what we're trying to say, hey, we know this is tough. You're not going to get 100% of it right, but we got your back. Uh, we'll help you know, get those 51 votes that you need to support the program if you're willing to go big and be bold. And of those 40 that you say, give 44, or take, 43, 44, 43. 43, of those 43, how many are up for re-election in 2012? Now, actually, I haven't broken it up that way, but I can think of in my mind that are I know at least seven or eight are up for, up for re-election. Mm-hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Well, we wish you the best of luck, because clearly these are problems that aren't going to go away, whether it's uh, now or the next election. Senator Mark Warner from Virginia, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on POTUS today.